Hey guys, so the truck is now ready for coating. I just finished wiping it down with prep, which is for getting any residual oils or from your hands or from the polishing compounds off of the vehicle. Uh, now we're moving on to applying the Can Coat Pro. Um, if you're doing it yourself, it'll just be Can Coat, but same application. Um, so. There's a few tricks with CanCode and CanCode Pro. One thing that a lot of people don't realize is with this one you are spraying it onto your cloth. Um, and when you spray it onto your cloth, this little sprayer atomizes so well that little bits will float up into the air and settle down on the vehicle as you go around. So the biggest thing to do when you're applying CanCode or CanCode Pro, especially indoors, um, is number one, we always turn off any fans or our furnace just so there's no air circulation in case there's other cars in the area, it can settle on the other car. Or if we, um, <clears throat> we always try to, when we're spraying the cloth, so when we're doing the application, point it away from the vehicle, that'll help minimize it. And then always, always at the end, once you're done doing the whole vehicle, we get a brand new cloth and then we, towel the whole vehicle just give it a very gentle wipe over the whole surface just in case anything settled on there and what that'll avoid is you'll feel a rough texture to your paint so like if i were to spray this in the air or towards the vehicle most of the particles are going to go into the cloth but a lot of them will settle on any flat surface that faces up and then if you wait until it cures it can be a complete nightmare to to get it off because this is a real true coating so once it cures it's on there really really well so the uh, biggest thing to avoid that is spray your cloth away or down and then you're going to apply the coating and then at the very end get a brand new cloth just so it's fresh and clean no possibility of any dirt in it and or anything and then just gently wipe the whole entire vehicle down one more time and then you're good to go so we'll start off by, I'm going to do the hood here. You won't be able to see it that great, but when I get down to this panel, you can get a better look at it. So with this coating, what I do is just a couple sprays and then you just wipe it on in a circular pattern, making sure to cover the whole area that you're working. Um, one thing that a lot of people do, especially on a white vehicle, is it's really hard to see it going on. So you kind of just have to trust that you have enough coating on your cloth because you will not see it go on. So you wipe it circular fashion and then back and forth, just double coverage, go over everything twice, and then immediately you have a second cloth for buffing off. I like trying to use two separate different colors so that you know which one is which, just because the one you're applying the product to is going to have a lot of product on it. So the second cloth is to level off anything that doesn't attach to the paint. So it'll stop you from getting streaks or having too thick or too thin in any kind of areas. It just evens everything out. So this step is really important. You can double it up, go over everything twice if you like, or if you're confident that you can cover everything evenly, then just do it once. So that little section is done. Um, if the car is a different color, it would be a, a lot easier to see it go on, but with it being white, it's pretty much invisible. Like we can see a very light hint of streaks as I wipe it on, just that's the solvents on the paint before they evaporate, but once they evaporate, it's almost invisible. So just make sure to cover everything. I like to start at the edge of a panel and then pick a point where I'm going to, depending on the coating and how long it takes to flash or whatever you would want to call it. And just go, so like this one, I did half of the fender. So now, after I level this off, what I'm going to do is do the other half of the fender, but I'm going to come maybe six, eight inches past that edge where I know I did so that there's no possibility of missing something. And then on the front, I went to the edge of the light. So then when I go up to the front to do the front, I will do the grill and then the light, and then I'll come a little bit past all the way around and then do the bumper at that time. 
So you're just kind of doing everything twice for the most part, just to make sure that it's all getting covered. So um, we're gonna work our way around the vehicle here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comments or you can find us on Instagram if you want to DM us and I'm always here to help. But this product is incredibly easy to use. It works really well. Uh, longevity obviously is not like a professional grade coating, um, but if you want a year of protection, so for people that lease their vehicle or you like to keep your vehicle perfect, so you polish it once a year anyways, it's, it's great for that. Um, we will go a little bit further in later series and we will do like longer term coatings. So we'll find kind of what's the best longevity, what's the best looking consumer grade coating and a few other things like that. So stay tuned and if there's anything you want us to cover, uh, give us a comment and hopefully you like the video. So the application of the uh, uh, Gion Can Coat here is much easier than a typical coating. The biggest thing is the solvents evaporate quite quickly. What it leaves behind is a thin layer of very durable protection. But one nice thing about it is that if you do the whole vehicle, you think you got everything, pull it outside, even probably an hour later, what you can do is if you find a high spot, which will just look like a streak or a smear, if you do it within an hour, maybe even two or three, what you can do is reapply the can coat to your cloth and then the uh, wet product will even out any streaks that you have left behind within a reasonable amount of time and then just hit it with your leveling cloth afterwards again and you'll be good as new. If you happen to make a mistake, leave a smudge or a smear somewhere, leave a couple days, then you'll need to break out a polisher to get it off. Um, <clears throat> but overall, very easy product to work with. You can see I'm doing massive sections. So like I'll do half of this box uh, do for application. Like obviously one, because we do this all the time, so I'm very used to it. But two, the product is just really easy to work with. So with a real kind of longer term ceramic coating where it's instead of using a cloth and a spray bottle, it's a small bottle that's high, highly concentrated with uh, solvents and that kind of stuff in it. It, some of them, you can only do a foot by a foot section before it's starting to dry and then you have problems wiping it off. So this is a great beginner coating. Uh, it's a nice place to start. It looks good. It works really well. Uh, longevity obviously isn't the same as a, a real, true, long-term ceramic coating, but it works great and lasts long enough where it's kind of worth doing the job once a year if you want to do that. But I'm going to keep, keep on going here and we'll see how she comes out. So I don't know if I mentioned it earlier, but uh, CanCoat and CanCoat Pro are safe for glass. 
Uh, we don't put it on a windshield, but you can put it on, like this has a giant moonroof that we're putting. Uh, you could technically do the side glass if you wanted to and the rear glass. I like to, if I'm going to put a windshield, I will use like a glass specific coating just because the clarity is higher and it's intended for use with windshield wipers so they have a lot more durability. Um, but most uh, coatings that aren't intended for glass, like whether it be this or any other even professional grade coating, if you put them on the windshield when they're intended to be on paint, they will usually work but it will only take a few weeks or so of the wipers rubbing on it for it not to be doing what it's supposed to be doing anymore. And then sometimes they'll even cause the wipers to judder when you're trying to get your glass cleaned off. So this can be used on glass, not on the windshield. Like you technically could put it on there, but I don't recommend it at all just because there are problems that could arise. Um, <clears throat> but for glass that doesn't get abraded by something like windshield wipers. It's awesome and I like it for, especially moon roofs, it's really easy just because you treat it like paint and rub it all surface and then we'll have easy cleaning up there too. And then side windows, if you want, you can do that. Not as important, just because they're vertical so they don't really hold a lot of water anyways, but it gives a nice little bonus if you want to go over all your side glass. And then I'll post a tutorial probably in the next week or so of doing a windshield. Um, there's a few different windshield coatings that are good. We usually stick with Gion View or we do have uh, OptiGlass Pro made by OptiCoat. Um, they're both great coatings, uh, easy to apply. And we'll give you a how-to video shortly on how to do that. It's easy. The Gion View is not a professional only product so you can buy it yourself and do it yourself. Uh, pretty easy, lasts great. And I think on my truck, I just reapplied a new coat of Gion View. And of course, a week after I applied it, I got a big chip in the middle of the glass that I have to replace now. But I, on the vehicle, I applied it when it was new and it lasted until 13,000 kilometers until I noticed that it was starting to degrade. Like I don't use my wipers too often, so I get a little bit more longevity than people that have the auto wipers cranked up whenever a speck of rain hits it. But it has really good longevity as long as you apply it correctly and I will show you how to do that in the coming video. So with a white vehicle like this, there are kind of ups and downs. Uh, if you're newer to applying coatings, it's harder to see that it's going on and coming off properly. Um, but the bonus is if you're newer and you happen to miss a little tiny spot, or if it was a black vehicle that would jump out at you and it would look pretty terrible, on the white vehicle, you will probably never see that you missed the spot even if you did. Um, not missed it, but missed the wipe off. So if you leave a high spot or a streak, it's going to be pretty hard to see, which is nice, but again, the application is kind of harder because you can't tell whether you're getting everything covered. And then on something like this, black pillars, black visor covers, when you come up to an edge like this, you're going to ride along the edge just because if you come up to it, it's going to leave a mark there. You'll be able to see it if you find the right light. And it will dry there and be there pretty much permanently and is a pain to get into a crack like that to polish it out. So just make sure that your leveling towel, you have a pretty fresh side whenever you're coming up to something black with a lot of edges, just because around something like this, it's incredibly easy to leave a high spot. So just ride every edge, kind of follow it through without stopping, and then hit each edge with the direction of the edge. And then I like at the end, not completely necessary with this coating, but some of the stickier ones, it's nice just to wipe almost everything off in a circular fashion. So, because on a, some of the longer term high SiO2 coatings, they're a little bit sticky, so it's like you're wiping peanut butter off of the surface. So like, get everywhere you wipe it and then stop, you're leaving a pile of product. So if you're doing it in circles, 
there's no real stopping point, so you wipe, 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 and then lift off, and it's going to be perfectly clear. Um, on those coatings, you would go through two, three times as many towels. On this, I'll probably go through, like, this is, I think, my third towel, and it's not entirely necessary just because you have four sides, or eight technically, so I fold it into four. Once the side starts to get a little bit of coating built up on it, I flip to a clean one, flip again, you got two more clean surfaces, and then if you want to really get the most out of your towel, you can fold it to the other side, and then do all four sides, or all, yeah, all four sides again. Um, I usually do two, and then four sides, and then I'll toss the towel. Um, this coating, which kind of shows that it's a real coating, not all real coatings do this, but most do. If you, when you apply the product with this towel, if you let it sit in your bin or wherever you put your used towels and come back to it the next day, if you run it under water, the water's just gonna run right off of it and it'll be completely dry. So the towels become fairly useless unless right when you finish, you spray it down with an all-purpose cleaner, let it soak in a bucket until it goes directly into the wash. Um, that's for the leveling towels. For the application towel, there's so much product on there that the next day, if you pick it up, it'll be stiff like a piece of cardboard. So whenever I'm done with an application towel, I just throw it right in the garbage just because there's so much product on there and it gets so hard that it's going to be useless for anything afterwards. So just keep that in mind. Um, I like using new towels all the time when I'm doing a coating. So it sucks to throw new towels away, but you can't really avoid it on the application towel. But I'm gonna kind of work my way through the rest of this. If there's any more little tips I can think of, I will pop my thing. Uh, one other little kind of bonus is, or bonus tip, when you're applying to something, say like this mirror when I was wiping it, this cloth was dangling down, and this, my application cloth, is saturated and coated. So just it brushing lightly against this paint, even though it doesn't seem like I'm rubbing on it, is going to leave streaks of coating. So just make sure whenever you're working on an area, so say I apply coating to just this layer of ash, there's going to be coating probably an inch or even two inches outside of that. So <clears throat> what I do is, sorry about that, um, just whenever you're applying to an area, wipe that area plus probably almost a whole cloth's width outside of that area or even more, it's not going to hurt, just to make sure you don't have any inadvertent streaks. Because you can wipe away all the streaks from you applying the coating properly, but your cloth uh, hitting an adjacent panel or something else is pretty easy to have happen and just that extra wipe around your area will take care of that.
was close. And that's it. So the vehicle's been coated, everything, all the paintwork, uh, chrome on the front grill, chrome on the back bumper, uh, plastics on the mirrors, all done with Canco Pro. Uh, if you're doing it yourself, you can do a Canco coat, obviously, because you can't get the Pro product, but very similar. Pro's a little bit better longevity, but overall, same application, um, same, almost everything. Like They function both really great. Durability is a little better on this guy, but pretty close. Um, the only thing we didn't coat on this truck, uh, two things, we didn't coat the glass. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, you can use this on glass. I don't recommend it for windshields, but everywhere else you can do. Um, we did coat the moonroof on this one, just not the side and rear glass or the windshield. And then also the rims, you could technically use this product on the rims, not so much intended for the high heat application. But it's okay, I've seen and done it a lot of times and it works great. Um, just on the faces, just because it's really quick, you have them clean, probably add another maybe 40 minutes onto your process and then you have the faces of your wheels coated. If you were gonna take, take the time to take your wheels off, then you might as well use <clears throat> a dedicated wheel coating like Gion Ram or any of the number of ones that are available just because they're for high temperature uh, applications. And then they're also much thicker and much more longevity you'll get out of it. So, but I'm gonna get on to just the final wipe. Like I said before, with this, uh, you're spraying onto your cloth. So when you spray on your cloth, atomize it into the air, and then it'll settle on the paintwork, and you'll have a rough surface left off if that happens. This I can't see any of it, but I don't want to risk it just for taking an extra five minutes to go around your vehicle and gently towel off the whole thing. Um, and yeah. Other than that, we're pretty much done. I'm just gonna throw some dressing on the tires. And for that, we'll probably, because there's such aggressive side tread on the, the tires, um, wiping it on with a sponge is kind of a nightmare. So what you can do if you don't have a compressor, we're gonna use a HVLP spray gun and then just kind of buff up any drips with an uh, applicator. But if you don't have a compressor, what you can do is spray it onto a detailing brush or paint brush, brush it in where it's all kind of has a big lugs, brush into that area, and then use the applicator for the rest. But uh, we obviously have a compressor here, so we'll spray it on, wipe it up, and then we'll give you a walk around of the finished product. Thanks for watching. So fresh new cloth, just doing the final wipe. Gonna go over all of the paint work, uh, just very gently. So all it is is just, just in case there's any overspray of any kind from us, uh, putting the product on via a sprayer instead of just dripping it out. Um, I've never had it happen where we send one out, but I also learned this lesson from another detailer because he did have that problem. And then I've seen it again on a few other things like uh, Matt from Obsessed Garage did that to his very own vehicle, uh, realizing it and so if you want kind of a, to see what the results are, if you don't do this final wipe, you could tune into Obsessed Garage. It's a great channel either way to uh, follow and look for, I think it was on his M3, he applied a can coat and now hates the product because of that. But um, even he said it's a good product, real coating applies easy, but you have to make sure to watch for the overspray. Um, so once I'm done wiping this all down, we're going to just give you a final walk around. So this is the final product. As you can see, the truck looks great. It's glossy. It 
shined up real nice between the polishing and then the coating on top. Uh, next week we have this truck coming back in for a follow up wash. So we just give it seven days before we wash it after putting a coating on it. And then I will show you the water behavior and how easily it cleans up. And we'll go around one more time and just get a better look, hopefully pull it outside and see how she looks. But thanks for tuning in and stay tuned.